And it has real world consequences, OK? You know, there's this kind of chicken versus egg situation about whether or not this is indoctrination or whether or not they're holding a mirror up to things that are actually happening in society. I tend to personally fall down in the former category there. I think there is a heck of a lot of indoctrination going on here. And I think that's why we see so many issues with Gen Z, which brings me nicely on to... Where do you think Gen Z are getting most of their news from? Should we be concerned about it? Should we be concerned about that generation that are coming forward now? Oh, absolutely. Studies show the majority of Gen Z do get their news from social media and specifically apps like TikTok or sites like YouTube. Now, we're both in the digital media sphere, so we might say, oh, that's that's not so bad because conservatives, the right, or even hexcentrists who simply aren't insane leftists, we're out there trying to get our message across too. So at least Gen Z will have the chance to hear a balanced perspective. But what we need to keep in mind is that right now, the platforms that Gen Z tend to consume their news from, whether that be TikTok or YouTube, they are in control. They are under the control of ideological leftists, right? YouTube actually has terms of service mm. in place. So does TikTok that actively prevents creators from discussing things from a right leaning or even centrist perspective. You're not allowed to misgender people on TikTok or on YouTube. You're not allowed to discuss certain issues freely, perhaps, uh, you know, the jab mandate uh, without getting censored. So uh, Gen Z is coming up to be one of the most progressive generations we've ever seen. And the right, we're, we're really we're going to need to dig deep as to how to reach this generation when it seems like the most convenient, most widespread avenue, we're actively being blocked by the people who are in charge.